Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome back to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and today we are continuing with our Ultimate Battle Royale series. So, last time we left off, we were right here, literally right here, and I wanted to show you how we're going to go about fixing this issue we had last time, all right? Let's take a look. So, to do this, we're going to need to add one more thing to our player, and we already kind of talked about it a little bit, and I'll show you what, what I mean by that. So, if we go back to my character here, and I look here, and we open up our Photon View, you remember I said there's going to be three components here that we need to kind of observe from a photon standpoint. So we left one empty. Hmm, what could that be? So we're going to add a new script. Okay, so let's go into our assets. We're going to go into scripts. And right here, we're going to right click and I'm going to add a new script called create C sharp script. We're going to call it player setup. So this is, pardon me, this is going to be called and this is going to be used rather during the setup of Photon, and this is going to tell Photon there are certain things we don't care about observing because they're not, they don't belong to us, and this is how we're going to sort of create that, that switch. Let's go ahead and open this up, and it's going to be totally blank, and what I'm going to do here is I have the script over here off screen, and I'm just going to copy and paste it, and then we're going to uh, talk about it line by line, okay? So let me go ahead and grab that, copy, and we're just going to paste this in here. There it is. Okay, so let's talk about this line by line. So first up at the top with our using statements, make sure we're using collections, collections.generic, unity engine, and photon.pun. Uh, our class name is called player setup, and it will inherit from mono behavior pun callbacks, just like this, and I pun observable. Okay. In our region for variables, we're gonna have our C controller, which is our character controller. Uh, we're gonna have a public camera called player camera. And this, this is the, the, the coup de gras. This is the thing I couldn't believe. I didn't know. I found it. I'm so happy. So there are behaviors, our components that can be enabled or disabled. So components like our scripts and our cameras and things that can be enabled or disabled. Perfect. So we're going to have a public behavior array called player components. Nice and simple. Now, uh, new region, unity methods right here in the start. Don't worry about these, we're gonna come back to those a little bit in a future episode, probably. We're gonna create a variable called is local player. So whether or not, like we said, talk about client versus server. So the client, us, the individual person playing the game, they logged in with your character, that is the local player, is how we refer to it, right? So is local player is gonna be photon view dot is mine. So if I, if the connection is is mine. If the connection to Photon View is my connection, that is the local player. That's the one we care about. So this is actually a variable now that is the connection, so to speak, right? So then we're going to say, okay, a, a nice little for loop here. For int equals i equals zero. i is less than the player components dot length i plus plus. Basically, loop through all the player components in this behavior array that we're going to put into it and say player components i enabled is equal to is local player. Now, what does that mean? That's that's a little bit confusing. What this means is it's going to loop through everything in this list that we're going to put in that list and say, hey, based upon the one that I'm on, I want the enabled state to be true or false, and I want it to be true if the is local player is true. Meaning, it's going to go through all of those components and say, does this belong to the local player? Then enable it. If not, disable it, essentially is what this is doing. So this means for our two players that were in the scene last time, right? It's gonna loop through these and say, technically there'd be say six, if we had three per, there'd be six of them, because it'd be three for me, three for you. And it's gonna say, for each of these six, does it belong to me? Yes, keep it. Does it belong to you? Then disable it. Because technically from my standpoint, I want to disable my access to your camera, to your controller, because I shouldn't control your character, I shouldn't see your, your camera, I just want to see my own stuff. So that should fix one of our problems, okay? Now, let's keep going. So another thing that can get a little bit crazy is serializing the data. So saving and loading the data properly. When you're talking about Photon, it does things called streams where the data is being sent in little bits and then sent back in little bits and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have this public void on photon serialized view. Wow, that's a lot of text. But essentially this is saying, hey, several times per second, we're gonna send you data back and forth. And what that data is, is packed into this thing called a stream. 
So then you can think of like little boats on a stream, send them along their way, right? We're going to send little bits of data and we want to make sure that that data being sent back and forth is the data that's pertinent to us, okay? So we're going to say, if the stream is in the is writing standpoint, what are the things that I want to send? So I have some, you know, hello, writing. This is my testing for myself to make sure it's working, right? So stream.send next. I want to send, what do I want to send? I want to send the transform.position of my character. I want to send the transform.rotation of my character. And I want to send the character controller's velocity. So I want to say, here's how I'm moving in the scene. You know, send that information that's important for me to send. Let's close this up. I don't like having blank space for no reason. Just like this. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a neat freak. There you go. So then here, stream send next player camera transform position, player camera transform rotation, right? Because the other thing that's important to me is my camera. Where is my camera at? Where is it looking? Because I want to be able to see what I expect to see when I'm pressing the controls and moving my camera around. Cool. So then else is saying, hey, if the stream is not in writing mode, so what's the opposite of writing is reading. So if it is reading the information, what's the information that I want it to read? I want to say transform that position is equal to a vector three stream dot receive next. So the stream receive this next data, this next bit of data is going to be a vector three and it is my transform.position. Same thing here. My rotation transform is actually going to be stream.receive next. It's going to be of a type quaternion because that's how you do rotations, right? So read that bit in next. And the same two things here from my player camera. Position is a vector three. Rotation is a quaternion. Cool. Now, this function we're not using yet. We may use it in the future. I may get rid of it, but don't worry about this. This is update camera transform. You actually don't need that right now. So all of that being said, all of that being done, let's go ahead and save that and go back to Unity. Give it a second to update here. Let's take a look. There we go. So we got a couple of problems here, but this is just warning saying, hey, you've added these things. You don't really use them. We use them in some instances. No problem. We'll get rid of that for now. Okay, back to the character. Select the character and we're gonna add this player setup. So with the scripts folder still open, I can just click and drag and drop here. You can drag and drop, or you could do the add component and you could search for player and player setup would be here in the list as well. Okay, so multiple ways to do that. So now we need to add some things to this list. So let's see here, I've got this, I've got some notes here, there we go. So we're gonna add some things, we're gonna add three things to this list and we're gonna add our player camera here. So player camera is obviously player camera, there it is. Now these components, so the one is the player camera, the actual camera object itself, the other is the camera from uh, a camera perspective. <laughs> it's a little confusing. The one is the camera as an object, the other is a camera as a camera, right? So we need that right there. And then these three elements here are going to be our player controller. So let's go ahead and take a look up here. So player controller, click and drag that him right there. The next one is going to be our camera controller, camera controller right there, there we go. And then the player camera, the player camera again. So let's grab this right here and put him in here. There you go. So he's in two spots. I know it's a little weird, but it works. So let's leave it alone. Now, the last thing is this player setup is a script that's going to enforce these rules on all of these things, right? But now the last thing that we needed to put into here is actually our player setup. We want pun to be able to observe this in order to say, here's what it's doing, right? We need to be able to reach into that. So that's the last step that needs to go into there. Now we can close all this up. And if I'm right, <laughs> is the big question, it should work just fine. So let's take a look here. So what I'm gonna do here is a little trick. I'm gonna go to build settings, make sure all that's correct. It hasn't changed since last time, so that's fine. And let's do a build and run. So it's gonna do a build, and then it's gonna immediately run that built application and then I'll be able to run it inside of here as well. Let's do that, there we go. So I now have a window spinning up, there it is. So for the moment, I'm gonna put this aside. We'll come back to that. Here in the editor, I'm also gonna hit play. And this is where we're gonna see if I'm right or if we need to do some editing magic and come back to it and uh, make some updates. So now in the editor, we have the benefit of seeing the, uh, the console here but in the built application, we don't actually. So what I'm gonna do here is in the editor, I'm gonna hit play and give it a second. Oh, so we're still getting that error about the master server, but I am the master server, so that's a little odd. But here we are, we're in the game scene. 
So now let me bring this one over. Let's say hit play. And we're in the game scene. And now you can see that I run over to my other character. And you can see, you should be able to see me pass by the other character. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe we have an error after all. But the important thing is I'm no longer controlling this other character, right? Let me come back to here. Oh, this guy has had an issue. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So we do have an error. Object reference not set into instance of an object on line 39 of our script. So let's take a look at that. So we bring this up, line 39. Ah, the stream of the character controller. That's right. So our character controller is not being accessed, and I don't think that that really works that well. So we're going to just get rid of him for now, and we'll try it again. Let's go ahead and stop everything. I'm going to try it again, because I believe that may be in error. So one last try. We'll do another build and run. The character controller velocity is not fully necessary if we have the proper transform and rotation working just fine. So that we might be able to get away with that and kind of say, you know, we don't really need the velocity because we can calculate that so that we don't have to be too hard up about that. So here we go. This guy's loading. So let's go ahead and load up over here. So there we are. We have the two loading. Matt has connected to the master server. There we go. Okay, so we'll just start up here because we're already here. Hit play. We're in the scene. There we go. Bring him over there, over here. Hit play. We're in the scene. And now, when I run up to this guy, aha, success. Okay, now, I'm trying to show this to you. It's, it's a bit difficult to do with, uh, with both of these, but as you see, this guy's looking up at the sky. And there you go. You see me pop in when I run past him. Ta-da! So now what we have, and you can see that he can see my aiming. So when I look up and down, that means my IK information is being passed over the server as well. So as I look up and down, again, it's a little choppy because of the, the two applications here running. But when you play side by side, you know, if I were to send this to somebody and we play with it, it's not too bad. Um, but now I have two different characters. And when I go over here, I'm not controlling him. See, I'm running around. I'm not controlling him. When I look up and down, he's not moving. So I'm only controlling the components that are part of my connection to the scene, right? So we go back over here, this guy, see he's looking down, come up behind him, do the whole it always was meme, right? So here we go, two characters, and we've got that connection going. So now we have the very basics of characters in the scene. So now we can start doing things like their ability to interact with each other. You see, I can't walk through him, which is nice because he does have a collider. And now we can just start to do things like integrating, crouching, running, sliding, jumping, that kind of thing, and make sure our animations are synced. As you can see, the animations are working, right? So you can see my animations. So we have the very basics now of having multiple connections at once. And we can go one further. I'll show you one further. If I go to the folder where this is, let me bring this up. So here's the folder, uh, Ultimate Battle Royale. Here we go. So let's go ahead and launch another instance. So I'm just going to launch it a third time. And we'll let that load up. And you can see here we have our two characters. And now if I look around, I'll try to look around and see the third guy pop into existence. We should be able to do this up to the 20 CCU limit. And that's currently connected users, which means if I were to send this to somebody right now, and as I'm testing live here with the video right now, and then I send it to somebody else, then they should be able to connect to it, and then we should see another person pop in. But for now, I'm going to click play. And go, hey, guys, you guys are having a conversation over here. Let me come talk to you, too. I'm here for the, the planning meeting with everybody. So here we are, three characters now. So I have these two, I have these two, and I have these two. So we have three characters now all joining in the conversation. We're planning our next videos together. So there you go. It's working. It's great. We're live. We're in there. So we'll continue to refine and work on the next steps. So we'll do some basic interactions, things like opening doors and that kind of stuff. So you can see when I inter interact with the world, it is shown to the other characters. And then we'll do, start to do slowly build up things like we're going to migrate away from the gun now that we know that it works. We're going to migrate away from to go unarmed to pick up a weapon. Then we'll do damaging one another. And we'll work through the whole system. So I'm going to plan out the next couple logical steps. But bear with me because we are going to go slowly to make sure that we build on good foundational knowledge. And we'll build up step by step and make sure it all works. And then we'll work on the idea of using, hopefully we can use something like scriptable objects to 
uh, instantiate your character into the scene and say, here's my custom setup. Make sure that travels with all that good stuff. So all that and more is coming. But for now, you have the basics of having multiple characters in a scene together. So if you were to take this project now, you can use this as a base and you can make anything that's multiplayer. It doesn't have to be even with guns or whatever. You can have a multiplayer like puzzle game. You know, hey, you go stand on that button over there. I'll stand on this button over here. If you talk through Discord or something, and now you've got the basis for something like that. So this is a good springboard for lots of different things. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys have uh, have had fun with this and are appreciating it. And thank you again for all the love and support and the feedback and the Discord. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I had some life stuff come up that just kind of bogged me down. But now, you know, rejuvenated, moving forward. Let's hit that 10K. Let's go well beyond it and just help as many people as we can. That's what I'm really looking forward to. So thanks again. I'm off to go start planning the next stuff and building more and more and more. So as always, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.